Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Bradley. This is my channel, Portly Gentleman. Uh, if it's your first time here, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. It helps the channel grow. Research it, mash it, boil it, ferment it, drink it, analyze it, share it. Home brewing is good. So you may have not noticed for a while now, you follow me on Instagram. Please check me out uh, at Portly Gentleman on Instagram. I'm also in the Facebook involved in the Brew Tools community there is I've had the steam condenser for quite a while. And I've used it for a good amount of brews, and I've been kind of quiet about it. I've really wanted to thoroughly test this out and make sure that I knew exactly uh, what was going on with it and exactly how I felt about it. There's no shortage of information in the Facebook group about the condenser um, and its operation. A lot of people ask about you know, how much water will you use when you're using this thing. Um, it's gonna use more water than if you're not. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, I've tried a couple different nozzles. Some of this is going to be caveated with, uh, I don't know if my, my batch size will affect the amount of boil off, the amount of heat I have to put into the system to make it boil. Maybe it's all relative and that number is going to be the same. So let's get into my thoughts and my review. Uh, full disclosure, I bought this with my own money, guys. All right, so first off, it's, it's shiny stainless steel. It's a bunch of nice components, nice flange, everything is polished, a little higher quality than you're gonna find from SS Brutech or Blickman, uh, only one that may come maybe on the same level as Spike Brewing, but I haven't handled a ton of their stuff to tell you for sure. Um, it also has, the uh, main deal is these nozzles inside of here and this little stem that they sit on that gets them down inside of that T. Um, this system doesn't use a pump, it hooks up right to mains water pressure. I suppose you could use a pump and recirculate, but nah, I don't know. I like the hose. Works great. So initially I got mine stock standard the way it, it normally uh, ships to everybody. Uh, I'll put the, uh, the size of the, uh, the orifice, the, the, the nozzle, how many uh, microns or millimeters it is, whatever the me measurement is there. And they have some stuff about pressure. Uh, I'm not going to speak in bar because it's, my head doesn't work. I'll talk in PSI guys. I'm in America. Um, Please forgive me. Uh, if you guys are in the US too, then it's gonna be great. So basically my house is water pressure is slightly low. Um, it's about 50 PSI, uh, that's what the regulator's set to. Every time I come and go from the house, I look at the regulator and think, I could just, just turn that set screw and then turn the other little bolt and bump up the pressure, but my house is like 30 years old and uh, I don't wanna water damage blow pipes. That would, that would really suck. My wife would be upset and uh, yeah. It's just bad, right? Uh, so my pressure is slightly lower than most homes in the US, I think. But if you guys want to duplicate this pressure-wise, you can easily go to Home Depot or a, any sort of irrigation store and buy an inline like plastic PVC regulator. They have them at 40 or 50 pounds. Uh, super easy to get if you guys are pushing a lot of water pressure. I know if you're uh, some places, UK, maybe Australia, you guys have crazy water pressure. I wish I had that here. It would be great. I found with the stock nozzle that in a, my regular brew, my typical volume I do uh, somewhere around 11, 12 gallons in the fermenter um, and a regular 60 minutes, I found I was using about 24, 25 gallons of water, maybe more, honestly. Um, and that's kind of, a, that's a good amount of water. Water here in Southern California is pretty expensive. Uh, I water the hell out of my grass because I like it to look green, which means I have to mow it more, which I kind of enjoy mowing it too. Anyway, so that's, you have to keep that in mind that, uh, you know, it's how much water you're gonna use. Everyone seems to ask that question. With the stock nozzle, I used quite a bit. So I've done a couple of brews now with the smallest nozzle. Um, and I think I'm right at the limit as far as this nozzle working or not, but the nozzle does work. The last two brew days I've done, I've used right around in uh, five gallon buckets. I've wound up with about 11 gallons, 12 gallons of water left over. And it's, you know, the, it comes out about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, is a good temperature for cleaning up. The water has this weird malty smell. I was talking with a buddy of mine and he told me that was probably a DMS. And I said, holy crap, you're right. That evil has a face now. Now I know the evil and I can smell it. Uh, so it's not gonna hurt anything, but that's just an interesting little side effect there. Um, if, you've, if you've not used one, you'll notice that water has that strange malty smell and that's the stuff we're trying to boil off when we're brewing. So that's, it was kind of cool, to be honest. I enjoyed that. So the steam uh, condenser, you need the steam hat. Uh, you also need a, a four inch tri-clamp and a gasket for it. Um, 
my condenser sits on my kettle perfectly. I mean, the, the hat and the condenser sits on top of that. It's kind of unwieldy to get this guy on there and clamped on. Um, I usually set it on a table, and then, then I just put it on there. I don't, uh, I don't assemble it on top of the B80. I've just found that to be a lot better because I mean, this thing is, is chunky. This is not, you know, this is not tiny. Um, so the big things here is it's gonna, you're not gonna have to have any sort of exhaust fan. I have a big 36 inch range hood. I put this up before the steam condenser was available. Um, trust me, this was more of a pain in the ass to put up the hood and expensive than the steam condenser is to use. So just get a steam condenser. It's gonna be better, even with buying the steam hat, it's, it's, gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be good. My, my hood pushes a thousand CFMs. I don't have any problems with steam, but I do have moisture that collects inside of it and will drip down. Um, just because there's so much, just uh, so much steam comes off of a, a B80 when it's running. Imagine a 150 is the same way. So definitely, this thing's a must just for that ease of life. Imagine if you're in a basement. Yeah, that would suck to be mold and mildew everywhere. It's also going to allow you to boil with even less power requirement. Like I said, in my batch, my scenario, uh, I'm some happy somewhere, honestly, around 40, 38 percent power. Um, even 35, I think I'm, I'm, I'm great with my volumes that I'm doing. And that's another huge, huge benefit is that I don't have to run my elements as hard. That means the likelihood of me having any sort of burn on my elements is minimal. I know there's been some software updates and I think they've changed the, the pulse width modulation of how the elements are firing off and on, off and on, uh, which I think is helping with that. I know some people have it running a pump when the boil, I, I don't do that. I mean, it works maybe, I don't, you don't need to. Um, I only do it when I'm trying to, you know, get warts in the chiller or something. Uh, so you won't have to do that if it's something you were concerned about or maybe you've heard or read. So I don't do it. In a nutshell, guys, the steam condenser is solid. It's going to save you uh, money, I think, versus a hood. It's going to save you a little bit of grief versus, you know, potential just um, the smell. If you have a stamina other that doesn't like the smell, uh, Mine happens to, to like it, but it definitely cuts that down once you're boiling. It, uh, all that steam just, yeah, just goes right into the bucket. And then you have, like I said, I have about 12 gallons of extremely, well, 140 degree water to use to clean up, which means it just speeds up my whole process because even though the, you know, this equipment heats up quickly, you're still dumping energy into it to heat that water. It takes time. Now if I can dump in, you know, I start with, you know, five gallons of my last uh, steam runnings, as hot as it c can be, that's a good place to start with PBW, CIP, and then uh, drain some off liquid, so the, I'll leave about a gallon in there so the elements are exposed. Another five minutes and it's done. If you haven't seen my full CIP video, check that out. Also, I have a video on how to do a Whirlpool My Technique. Uh, that one's still relevant. There's been no Whirlpool equipment come out to make my video obsolete yet. That's a thing. That's a thing that they do. They make my videos obsolete because they make new cool stuff. All right, guys, so as always, thank you so much for watching. It means a ton to me. Uh, I really enjoy putting this video together. I really enjoy kind of uh, uh, really paying attention to how these brew days have gone that I've had this for. It's been hard for me not to, to say more in other videos because I've used this thing quite a bit lately. Uh, but here it is now. I hope this video is helpful. I hope everyone is well. As always, remember, this has been Bradley, and home brewing is good. I'll see you real, real soon. Thanks again.